Hello, my name is Patrycja Kochmańska. I work at Intel and together with Aleksandra Jereczek and Maciej Paczkowski, we prepared a talk regarding machine learning in a packet routing process using Quagga or Zebra software suite. We will start by introducing a bunch of information about link state routing protocols. Then we will tell about possible improvement areas. We will describe current link state routing protocols implementation and how it is possible to use machine learning in current OSTF or ISIS networks. We will show you the results of our experiments in simulated environments and describe potential practical applications and their limitations. Modern routing protocols are taking various approaches on how to select paths for packets in the most effective way. There are two main classes of routing protocols. The first one is distance vector routing protocols, in which routers have no information about the whole network topology, and the decisions about the best routes are based only on the data about costs gained from routers nearest neighbors. And there are also link state routing protocols, which assume that each network node creates and stores its own scheme of the whole network topology and then independently calculates the least cost path from itself to every other node. The topology scheme may be considered as a graph. The paths are calculated based on Dijkstra's algorithm. It finds the shortest path between two graph nodes by adding up the cost of links by itself. The most popular examples of link state routing protocols are OSPF and ISIS. Over recent years, computer networks have experienced a huge and dynamic change. Modern networks are getting bigger, more virtualized, and more dynamic. The virtualized environments are being widely used in data centers and lab providers. The virtualization aspect allows, us to, allows networks to have more and more nodes and therefore to have a huge amount of virtual machines that are being dynamically added or removed from the network. Initially, network recovery time, having reached a few tens of seconds, was considered sufficiently fast. Therefore, OSPF's original design was not comprehensively optimized in this field. However, over almost 20 years, these requirements have changed. Nowadays, networks are using more and more powerful and computationally efficient devices, and currently, such long, inoperable network state would cause unacceptable traffic loss level. Having in mind the dynamic character of computer networks, they are still expected to be stable and 100% accurate. The problem occurs when networks experience a huge uh, amount of link failures. In this case, the adaptation time of such networks may take even a few seconds. The core of our idea is to reduce recovery time and therefore faster adjust to the new network topology. The main goal of OSPF is to determine the best paths between all network nodes. Link state advertisement packets are being sent each time a change occurs in the network, and based on these packets, link state database is being filled. Dijkstra algorithm that is used in current OSPF implementation operates on data stored in LSDB in order to calculate shortest path tree. The SPT represents the shortest paths to each destination in giving routing area. In the picture, we can see how LSA packets are used to build up the SPT. Next packets are used to build the overall view of the network topology. Such LSDB is later used by OSPF in SPF algorithm in order to create routing information data. Changes in the topological database trigger partial or full routing table recalculations with SPF algorithm. Full recalculation, of course, takes longer time and is more expensive. Since each transit link that fails is connected to at least two routers, it results in at least two routers forced to run full SPF recalculation. This recalculation has a negative impact on the overall network uh, efficiency because it may result in packet losses. The final base that is used to choose output interface to direct a packet to its destination is called forwarding information base. In case of full routing table recalculations, SPF requires some time to generate new routing information base, so the forwarding information base is not updated at the same time LSA comes into the database, and this creates network outage. This picture shows examples of routing table that is calculated by OSPF and forwarding table that is finally used to forward packets. 
it is worth mentioning that the RIP is used in user space and FIP in kernel space of Linux operating system. In order to create routing information base, link state protocol undertakes few steps. Firstly, it creates link state database based on LSA packets. Then it performs SPF calculations in order to create shortest path tree. The tree is then used to determine the most efficient routes and to create the routing table. This routing table is then passed to the kernel space and effectively used to forward packets to specific ports. The current OSPF implementation is 100% accurate but have an area of improvement when it comes to the recovery time after multiple link failures. To optimize the problem of recovery time, SPF calculations are not only run in full mode, but there are also partial or incremental modes of SPF recalculations in which not all of the SPT is recalculated. However, full SPF recalculations still occur and lead to an outdated forwarding information base and network outage. Here we can see on which stages of OSPF operations the network may be in inoperable state. And as we can see, this is a relatively long period of time. Thank you, Patricia. And now let's focus on how can we use machine learning in current link state database protocols like OCPF or ISIS. Uh, we want to use machine learning to enhance the routing information base recalculation step. In the picture on the right uh, here, you can notice that we added additional parallel uh, AI algorithm. So our solution is based on the running AI algorithm. It can be neural network that would compute the routes in parallel with primary dextra algorithm. And uh, algorithm can be implemented in a, as I said, in form of a neural network. It would be trained to output the next hop from the local router to reach other router in the network. Uh, as Patricia said before, the overall goal is to reduce the time needed to construct the functional forwarding information base, that is with high probability good enough to direct packets until the full SPF calculation is done. Uh, the additional parallel AI algorithm, uh, I mean this one, uh, creates a temporary uh, routing information base. Uh, and then we pass it to the system as a temporary firmware uh, forwarding uh, information base. Uh, temporary FIB with high probability allows reaching the destinations of the packets because of not fully predictable nature of AI algorithms, the decision may not be 100% accurate, but well-trained neural network can get close to this value. Uh, the AI algorithm will anticipate the SPF recalculation, providing probably the best next hop given that LSDB state. The calculation of this next hop corresponds from the packet forwarding perspective to the minimum spanning tree calculation, which is uh, computationally more intensive. Um, here. Uh, here's another picture of our idea. As you can see, we want to add parallel routes recalculation only in case of full recalculation request, since this is the only place where AI algorithm is faster than original approach. Full recalculation request is performed every time when transit link fails. This results in two or more routers always forced to run expensive full SPF recalculation with a very negative uh, impact in the routing of overall network. Uh, why do we claim that AI solution is faster than our original approach? Uh, well, it's simple mathematics. Uh, let's say that n is the number of routers in the network. So the extra algorithm is n square complexity, while neural network is only n complexity. So let's say uh, for 50 nodes, a uh, neural network will be incomparably faster than old good Dijkstra. Uh, of course, as I mentioned before, we don't want to replace Dijkstra with neural network. All we want to achieve is to generate temporary routing table. Uh, 
and pass it as soon as possible to system forwarding table. Uh, we realized that the forwarding table based on neural network is not 100% accurate, but it's better than nothing at this point. We have a choice to use totally outdated FIB forwarding table or use the new one generated by neural network and rely on it in case of the extra calculation are not done yet. Uh, AI algorithm uh, will be trained separately for each node to output the next hop from the local router to reach each other router in the network. Thanks to that, we will have a forwarding table that is good enough until the full uh, SPF recalculation is done. Neural network is trained based on previously calculated SPF routes and may be retrained adaptively while network is operating. Uh, the data set of the AIL algorithm is trained with the uh, per router data set that can be easily obtained in a simulation for every of network. Okay, on this slide, we have a firmware information uh, based state chart with the SPF Dijkstra based process and AI based process. Please notice that uh, the chart is not in a scale. However, the AI process part will be always less than SPF algorithm part. When you look at the FIB state, you can notice three colors, three different colors. The orange one is the network outage state. Our goal is to reduce this orange part as much as possible. This is a stage when we need to rely on outdated old forwarding table, and this state is a chaos. The yellow part is the state we want to run our network using forwarding table produced by AI algorithm. As I said, this is not the final state, and it's not 100% reliable. Uh, in yellow part, we want to control the chaos caused by topology changes and where the old forwarding table is totally outdated. Temporary FIB uh, is used until the full uh, SPF recalculation has come to its end. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's worth remembering that the complexity of the generation of FIB table with our algorithm scales with N. Uh, when n is the number of routers. As for each router, we need to compute the next hop from the local router. And this is done with the constant cost. That is the cost of having AI algorithm to generate the output for each router to reach. And due to the SPF complexity, this part can much, much longer uh, than AI algorithm takes. The green part is the state when all SPF Dijkstra calculations are already done. And uh, final FIB is ready to use. At this moment, we stop using neural network based FIB and we start using the final deterministically generated routing and forwarding tables. Okay, on this slide, we have a time chart based on our initial calculation and test in fully simulated environments. As you can notice, we are able to reduce network time outage even three to four times uh, in case of 50 nodes networks. Uh, so apparently temporary FIB calculated by artificial intelligence significantly decreased the outage time. And even if routing decision based on it are not 100% accurate, they can decrease packet loss level when network state is not stable. We didn't put uh, exact time on a scale since for different simulation environments, this time uh, are, these times are different. However, the shape of this uh, chart and the nodes times correlation of this chart are constant. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about potential practical applications and the limitations. Uh, the main targets of our solution are big industrial size data centers with many physical and virtual devices connected in the network. The proposed OSPF or ISIS recovery time optimization 
applies to big and dynamic networks where a full SPF recalculation often occur and packet loss tolerance is quite low. Uh, moreover, the AI part of offered solution may be supported by using hardware AI accelerator, accelerators that additionally would decrease the CPU usage of data center sent servers, which may have different efficiency. Uh, we may imagine uh, that solution can be implemented on a hardware working and a plug and play manner. And this will be accelerate data centers network performance without significant inference in the network devices. Uh, this project can be also adapted to be used in a smart network uh, interface cards called called uh, SmartNICs. They can act as a Linux-based router while being a traditional hardware NIC. According to our observations, uh, even one AI-based router node in the network can decrease the average overall network self cleave time. Of course, this is not the rule. It depends where the router is placed in the topology. So if the router is in some critical place with a plenty connection to other routers, it will help decrease, uh, decrease uh, average outage time. Uh, now a few words about uh, limitations. Unfortunately, our solution will not resolve congestion problems. This, one, this is one of the biggest problem in loading link state uh, protocols. Unfortunately, uh, our idea will not help here. We believe this would require a totally different approach. And we just wanted to focus right now on a self-healing time. Uh, okay, for the end, I want to say a few words about next steps. We still have a lot of work to do here. For now, we have an initial implementation in Quagga, software routing suite. Uh, however, the solution can be implemented in FRR or any other software routing suite. Uh, next steps are tests in the real, unstable, and predictable environment with the frequent topology changes. So there is a, a lot of tests for us. Uh, we need to compare uh, results from real environment. Then we'll assess the real advantage of our solution. Uh, okay, we put some more interesting information in our paper, so I very encourage you to read it. And uh, I think that's all we had. That was our brief idea. Thank you very much for spending time with us and take care. Okay, uh, thank you. So we have a few questions on the chat. Um, I'll go ahead and, and read them. Then if the uh, person asking the question wants to, wants to have follow up, they um, are welcome to unmute their microphone. And of course the uh, presenters can answer as needed. So the first one, perhaps we could use reinforcement learning and use SPF Dijkstra's algorithm for reward function to make this more adaptive. Uh, do you hear me? Sorry. Go ahead. Can you? Okay. Uh, okay. I, I think I'm mute. We can hear you. Okay. Great. <laughs> uh, sorry, I had some problems when I had phones. Uh, we could use a reinforcement. Well, uh, I would say that this is a uh, implementation detail for this moment. Uh, this is a brief idea. Uh, yes, we use, uh, we, we thought about this. Uh, also, there is uh, Patricia who was more involved in, uh, in the implementation part. She's, uh, she couldn't join, unfortunately, because of the internet uh, access on, in her area right now. Uh, we'll think about it, of course, uh, about reinforcements, but uh, for now we just want to focus on the next step, which is the uh, test in the real environment. So uh, this is what we want to do right now. Yeah, there was a, a kind of a part two to that. Uh, looks like we're using supervised learning here. 
what is the neural network model, neural net model, how many uh, layers in it? Well, as far as I remember is uh, five layers, but you know, this is a uh, kind of that uh, we have to experiment. <laughs> so this is not the, this is not the final solution. This is not the final implementation. We still have to uh, uh, find the, you know, the, the which, which what, 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 what is the best uh, way to, we, we, we don't have a uh, final solution. So the, as I said, the, now we have a five layers, but it can be five, it can be six, it can be seven. So it's, uh, now, now we stick to five, as far as I remember. <laughs> okay, uh, and one more. So, what are the events and or the events and weights on the events in the model? Uh, events in the model. It's the same question, Tom. It's basically okay. what is the model, right? Yeah. Like, what, what is <laughs> yeah. the model that you're using, and are you biasing them in any way, right? So, yes, yeah, it's a full connected, uh, full connected network with the five layers. But uh, as I said, this can be changed during the the next step. So it's uh, I would not stick to this one. No, no. So, so I guess my question was, what did you use today, right? Like, how did you train the model? What was, what were the design criteria? Uh, to be honest, uh, I wish that Pastoricia is not here <laughs> because she was mostly involved in the implementation right now. So uh, I think we can take it offline and uh, if, if you want, we can just, uh, we can answer by email. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, so it looks like uh, Christian has multiple questions. So um, go ahead, Christian. Hi. Okay. I the little mic thing is moving, so I hope you can hear me. Um, yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> yeah, so this is pretty interesting to me. Um, I'll just let you know I'm the co-chair of the uh, LSR working group in ITF, so of ISIS and OSPF. Um, mm -hmm. I also probably been working on this stuff for about 20 years. And one of the things that we did, you know, look at for my decade at Cisco, we worked particularly on a project for fast convergence. So we were looking at, you know, um, how to converge the network end, end to end. So in other words, all the routers along the path, right? <laughs> for any failure. And we were using, for, to give you real world uh, numbers, we were using a, a, a real world network of customer of ours. And it was a thousand node network, a thousand node global network. And so we, when we did all of our optimizations that we could, we focused on this project for many months and optimized up and down the stack. Uh, the fastest we could get the convergence down to was about 120 milliseconds. Uh, oh. We didn't advertise that, but that's what we got. Um, okay. And uh, of that 120 milliseconds, uh, the full SPF calculation was seven milliseconds, right? So I, you know, it's, there are so many bigger problems. I, I, I'm not, not saying that your work isn't, isn't useful, right? Because knowing how to do things faster is, but you know, we, you're sort of optimizing. We have bigger, much bigger issues. The biggest one um, is propagation delay, right? Yeah. The amount of time that it takes to propagate the failure, the, 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 uh, the new link state uh, across the thousand node network. Now you talked about that. I think you were sort of you were getting at that when you said congestion problems. Um, mm -hmm. It's not even, I mean, it's not even that. It's just, you know, our protocols have built-in uh, dampening and, and whatever. And we're, we're working on that actively to actually really speed that up. Um, but yeah, and, you know, so, so right. So this is interesting, but maybe not too useful right away. What I, um, so that, that wasn't really a question. It was just kind of giving you some feedback. Um, uh, the question that, that I had was, and where I would think that this might be interesting uh, for a current day use, would be if you were doing something to guess, um, guess at failures. So instead of just trying to optimize the SPF algorithm, right, which is pretty optimal, even though it's, I mean, I don't know what, how expensive each operation is in the machine learning, right, but it's super cheap in Dijkstra. So even though it's n squared, it's still really fast, right? Until n gets, you know, unreasonably large, right? Like maybe millions or something. I, I don't know. But um, 
but what I'm what I'm wondering is, can can we do something with machine learning where if I see a certain failure pattern, right? Like I see a link fail in one place, and you know, and because of that, it's going to shift traffic naturally to another link, right? Which might, because of the way the network is currently running, might cause another failure downstream, right? Which then has a cascading effect through the network. It seems to me that that's the type of pattern stuff that maybe machine learning could could uh, get at, right? So you could almost be um, predicting a better route because you know that if you took the first choice SPF came up with, you were gonna cause a cascade failure. And so it just avoided it altogether and picked a different one, uh, maybe a suboptimal route. I, you know, I mean, that's crazy talk from, from the chair, right? Don't you miss that suboptimal yeah. route sounds like routing loops, but. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, that, that seems like, like where the real power of machine learning maybe could show up is, is in better path prediction. Yeah. Have you thought about that? Yeah, but this is a very good feedback, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, so, you know, we, we try to uh, find a way, how can we implement uh, artificial intelligence machine learning in a, in a, in a, reading protocols at all so uh that was the f our first guess that maybe we'll be able to you know decrease this uh time with uh dijkstra so uh as you said that uh, your idea or uh, this this could be this would uh, require changing our uh, uh model i think that uh, we, we we were focused only on the you know decrease the the this part with the uh, with the Dijkstra algorithm. So uh, and well, and you know, I mean, uh, also Dijkstra is used can use a lot of places in graph theory, right? So yeah. there might actually be applications for this, you know, maybe not in real world uh, networks because they're not that large. Even at a thousand nodes, they're not that large, but. Yeah. You know, there might be other graph applications where the numbers get into the hundreds of thousands where it really could make a difference. I, I don't know. Yeah, so as I said, we we, we need to test first this on uh, and in a real environment, then we can uh, say that we uh, achieve something <laughs> here. And uh, But the, that was a very good feedback, I would say. Okay. So next question, uh, please share the link to your paper. Uh, we will have those links on the NetDev site. I guess if you want um, an advanced copy, Mate can, can post it on the chat if, at his discretion. Uh, sorry. Uh, I, I, I see the chat. So that, that yeah, if, if, you, if you want, um, you don't have to. But uh, there is one other question. To give you a hint, this problem looks close to autonomous, autonomous self-driving cars. So if the car drive could drive from source to destination, then a packet could be used to drive from source to destination. So are we doing the same thing that self-driving cars are doing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, feedback. I don't know if this is the real question. Uh, so, so I wonder, I mean, maybe it's more if we're asking to find commonalities and analogies in between different processes that don't appear to be uh, the same thing offhand, right? So, um, you know, thinking about maybe not so much self-driving cars, but when we look at uh, Google Maps, for instance. Yeah. So probably use a similar algorithm to, to go from point A to point B um, in an optimal fashion. So that's, that's an easy algorithm to implement. But I think once you start looking at uh, parameterizations of that algorithms and complexities, uh, that's where the AI and machine learning becomes interesting, right? So um, to get from point A to point B, in the shortest distance is fixed. To get from point A to point D, B in the shortest time uh, is very variable. And that could depend heavily on a lot of characteristics, time of day and what have you. So it seems like the, the AI and machine learning kicks in once the algorithms become uh, less deterministic and you have more inputs and there's some sort of um, randomness 
to those inputs that, that maybe make it a chaotic system. So do you think uh, that's, that's where all this is going, is, is going beyond just um, re-implementing the, the static algorithms, but actually coming out with, with improved algorithms that add in some of these uh, less tangible inputs? Well, I think so. So that, that this is a direction. <laughs> However, as I said, we all not solve the congestion problems with the, with the solution we, we just described. So uh, we just want to make faster network. But yes, this is also the, 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 the direction we want to go. Yeah, so every, everybody wants faster networks. <laughs> Uh, let's see, so Salil, uh, sure, for large scale networks, this could be key. So uh, interesting statement. So I, I guess the question there is in scaling, do we, do we believe that as we scale to larger and larger networks, uh, at some point, I think the prediction was we'd have over a trillion IoT devices. Uh, clearly, it's only gonna get bigger do we start yeah. to need uh, to go beyond the, the fixed algorithms into this sort of um, AI and machine learning algorithms? Yeah, I think this is uh, for uh, our solution is designed for a large scale networks. I mean, uh, we, we are aiming into the big, big data centers. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you.